Hey there everybody, welcome to Trial Azure Gaming. Today we are back with the Yu-Gi-Oh! Sealed Only Challenge Edition, Episode 23. Now, we've been on a good course of changing the series to make it much easier to get what we need. Last episode, we opened a total of 36 packs, but we also lost two matches. Do you know that we get two whole extra packs if we win? That brings that 36 up to 40. That is a nice, solid number. But every week, every episode, Anytime I do this, we've been dropping matches. The deck just isn't strong enough to compete, even against Sword Soul, Labyrinth. Even, I mean, technically we've beaten Virtual World, but, you know, we sometimes lose those matches, and it's like we have to stop doing that. I have to stop doing that. I say we, but it's me. I have to stop doing that. And so, honestly, this episode, we have 36 more packs, because literally the same thing happened last episode. We lost two matches. And the episode challenges and the virtual challenge really are something that rely on winning matches and pulling cards from the final build. But guys, very important, let's actually look at the challenges. Looking at virtual challenges, it's it's the same thing that's been there for weeks now. It, it's, it's tough to see. I really thought we were going to win match after match after match and... It never, it hasn't come to fruition. Open 25 packs. We did that. Add eight cards from the final build. We did that. Virtual challenge number three looks good until you look at the win 10 matches. We have won one match for the last three episodes since virtual challenge three came in. And guess what? I don't want to just win one this episode. So hopefully we turn around and find ourselves winning more than one match and really boosting that three up. Like if we can get that to five or six, that's fantastic. But if we just get to four, this virtual challenge, which has been a big part of us adding cards to the deck, has really started to slow down and not in a way we want. Moving to episode challenges, guys. I, I kind of kept some of them last week in one of the sections, but win two matches. Last week it was win, or last episode it was win one match. This time we're going for two. Add two cards from the final build. That stayed the same from last episode. And then instead of gain one subscriber, which we did, fantastically enough, I want to thank you to the subscriber who let me control these packs, uh, add one extra deck monster from the final build. And uh, so win two matches, that's kind of the minimum goal I have in my head anyways. Add two cards from the final build, I hope we could add two. And with how many extra deck monsters we are kind of chasing this episode, hope we add at least one, guys. Honestly, when it comes down to it, I'm... I have to say I'm confident about packing something good this episode. I have all the product in. I feel very good. And, uh, you know, it's tough to record this. I, uh, it's the anniversary of my grandmother's passing, October 1st. Uh, at the time, I'm recording the intro and the pack opening. And um, it's, uh, it's weighing on my mind. But it's one of those things where she told me on her deathbed to chase my dreams and not give up and so this episode i'm hoping for the anniversary for everything i have planned for the future of this channel that this episode is big guys i mean there's what, what else can we do let's actually look at the deck situation and what we are possibly trying to get so guys we're here obviously at the deck list and i have to say again 36 packs this week much like last week what all we can we get from these packs well Honestly, there is a possibility to pull quite a bit. Technically, we are going to still chase out the sphere mode. I already mentioned that I've ordered more of them. They have come in, so we will be trying to chase out the sphere mode. That's two cards that hopefully we can get, as well as if everything goes just right. From the extra deck, we could add one, two, three, four, five, six. Technically, we could add the entire extra deck and two side deck cards if everything goes perfect. Now, will everything go perfect? Well, really the only way to get Baguska is, we mentioned it before, is the special edition for Circuit Break that has Sphere Mode as the promo card, Baguska comes as a super. So out of the packs we are opening today, we have to hope Baguska is in one of them. That's even if we get the Sphere Mode. So those three are very tied together. We're also opening more Crystal Revenge that we opened last week, which has Chance for Borload, Savage, and Access Code, two very powerful boss monsters um we're also opening more of the 2023 10 which has beyond the pendulum and dark dark trauma gloomy 
I honestly want to say the last two 2023 tins we're opening today is the end of my first case, which honestly, if we don't pull Beyond the Pendulum or Guru Rings of Resin Life because we have a trade deal with my other sealed only series, this series pulls Guru and the other series pulls Beyond the Pendulum, they can trade. But I want to be honest, guys. If out of this whole first case, I don't get a Beyond the Pendulum or Guru, I may have to stop looking, even though I have a second case coming. Part of me wants to give up on the 2023 tins already. Uh, we technically do have a shot with Appaloosa Bow the Goddess because our Patreon packs, well, they as well are what they were last week, the 2020 tins, which is another shot, obviously, at Bow Load Savage. So looking at that and stopping, Dimensional Fisher is something we have chased really with the virtual challenges. Winning matches can get us back on that track. Dimensional Shifter, Nibiru, Really, if everything goes perfect, the main deck and the nibs in the side are all that would be left. But there's only a way to find out if we actually are getting what we need. Let's get to the pack opening. This is what we're opening today, guys. Well, technically not all of this because there's another Box Battles Legend under here for Chris Revenge. But we are opening 36 packs. And this giant stack of Circuit Break, there are four of them down here, guys. So, yeah. A lot of product to open. Now, the 25th anniversary tins and the circuit break, I want to open because there's promos inside. You know, we obviously we're looking for the sphere mode out of these. But I'm going to already take the packs out of the 2020 tins as well as get the packs out of Crystal Revenge. So we'll be right back with the actual packs we'll be opening. So we obviously have six packs from the two tins as well as... This, this breaks out weird. I've talked about showing it, but yeah. We have like 12 packs here for Crystal Revenge. Uh, four of them are from the new box. Uh, I just mixed them up, so I don't know which four. And the rest are from the old box. As well as the tins and Circuit Break. I am actually going to start with Crystal Revenge. Uh, pretty much, I think this is the most high rolly of the sets. Uh, because we're literally looking for two boss extra deck monsters that might not even show up. So, Todoroki, Earthbolt Star, Senko, the Skybolt Star, Blackbeard, the Plunder Patrol Captain, which is where the slot would be, Dynabase, and Amazon is Hotspring. So, yeah, that secret slot is the only slot that matters, really, for this series, or in general, for this set, I actually believe. So, yeah. Roll a call, we do want to see either, uh, I see effect monster there, so it's useless. We're either wanting to see a f uh, Link or Synchro. Dream Cicada, Doodle Beast, yeah. Graham and... Uh-oh, uh yeah. The Doodle Beast stuff doesn't even remotely interest me. Like, the concept of it is like, if you're going to do something, go full out on it and not be mid. Topaz Tiger, Bridge. Chaos Space, nope. Stonehenge, hey, a DD Crow. And I mean, anything we pull here does help the collector's journey. And uh, so, you know, at the end of the day, we can't complain. Skybolt, Toon, Harvey Lady, Numeron Dragon, uh, Hall, and a hey, Breeze. I like Breeze. So keep moving along. We are going to come across G Pebble Dog, Gadget Box. It's a Link. Ah, okay, I can't be mad. Kisakil. I love the evil trends. Okay, so keep going. Box. Oh, it's a link. Patchwork. Okay, well, unfortunate. And Reflection Doll, Amazon Soul. I like, I... I hope we see something out of this. Venger and Savior. Dice Dungeon. Oh, it's an Exceeds. Ninja Shadow Mosquito, Mosquito, and Cobalt Eagle. I do like the Crystal Beasts from back in the day. I don't know why I always thought that they would get some cool support. And, you know, I don't think the new ones are. Break Bolt. I just skipped to it. Artemis. Dream Shark. Another DD Crow. I think we have over in a, a play set, though. I think technically our binders, even. Like, the binder is full of DD Crows. Crystal Heart. Advanced Dark. Nope. Beast Sapphire Pegasus. Oily Cicada. Yeah. Okay, we are now. I want to move the extra packs over there. Chaos Valkyrie and Love Valkyria. Patchwork, Evil Trin, Lila, my favorite of the bunch. 
merchandise and Blackwing form or master. Two packs left. We have toolbox. Dice. Wait, there's something there. Dice dungeon and. Oh, holy crap! Hold on, hold on. Blizzard of the Foreign Oath. B. Stammer Mammoth. We got a savage, but. I. Wait, Starlight's come in this set? My first Starlight, and it's a Borload Savage Dragon. I was not expecting that. I, okay, um, okay. Roar Call, Vengeance, Save Your Team, Bookmark, Breeze, and, um, hold on, guys. I, I need to, um, I need to get a sleep. I'll be right back. A Starlight Borload Savage Dragon. My first Starlight ever, and it's a usable card. I'm not going to sell this thing. I was debating if I wanted to sell this and buy a, a regular version, but no. I like to keep the first copy of everything. Unfortunately, I could not keep the very first copy of IP Mask Rain of the 25th Century that I pulled. And uh, But I'm keeping this ball load, and we will be using it in the deck, guys. A Starlight Wear. I... Uh, I got a phone call a second ago, had to interrupt filming right before I got to the very first pack in this, uh, in Crystal Revenge, and what a way to see Borlo Savage, but Starlight form. That is, that is amazing. So, the 2020 Ten of Lost Memory, um, the only thing, I guess, now if we bore, pull a bore load, it's not as usable. Oh, God, I don't know the pack trick for this one. Is it three six? And then there's the uh, rare at the back, and then I think it goes secret, ultra, super. Right. Okay, I think that's right. Okay, Guardian Core Awakening, Draping, Justica, T Rex, Stole, Cataclysm, Run, Fusion, Glimmer, Wonder Heart, Onyx, Comeback, Atrix. Okay, so it isn't. There's one more. There's two supers. Gotta move Crystal Revenge up there. Uh, right Howling. Nightmare Incarnation Idly. Change Souls. No, it's okay. So Romulus. Spin Turn. Okay. Uh, this pack is. Whoa. As I just tried to damage all my cards. My hands are shaking from that Starlight Pull. I'm absolutely freaked out. So this pack is just straight up weird. Three, four. Six, this doesn't make any sense. So it's two ultras, the secret. No, wait, I'm doing this wrong because this is the rare. So hold on. Rare, ultra, ultra, secret, super, super rare. Doom. Okay, I think I got this. Okay. Uh, Transcendence, Cannon Core, versus non machine Glass for May. No, it doesn't matter. Flyback, Connection, Current, More Production. I think I got this right. Cat Shell, Witchcrafter, Man and Murray. Speed lift, Mech, oh, Crusadia Abramax, into prison, and Mystic Mine, a card everybody wishes would come back off the ban list. Right, guys? Yay! Fun interactive card, yay! Should totally come back to three with Max C, yay! So, one, two, three, three, four, five, six. Yeah. So, rare, ultra, ultra, secret, super, super. I'm going to mess this up. Escape of the Unchained, Familiar the Abide, Defender Labyrinth, Foxer, Tenish, Burning Shell, Raining View, Discharge, Tegelmint, Chariot, Doom Eagle, Final Seven. Okay, here we go. Collaboration, Unchained, Soul of Anguish, Bob by Damage, Smada, By Street, IP Mascarena. Great card, we just don't need it. Not in this build, we already got one. Two, three, four, five, six. Then rare, ultra, ultra secret, super, super. Right, this would be entering the second tin. Sea Star, Shathana, War Awakening, Bezel Ship, Mandarin, Mardark, Unchained, Secession, uh, Betrayer, Fury of the Fire, Cliffhanger. I almost didn't recognize that was rare. Monoceros, Fire, Dragon, World Dark, Fluid, Bob by Damage, Storm Dragon Return, Get Out, Shaman of the Tenny. 
Well, we've seen a lot of links, which is good because IP Masquerina is what we'd want from this. So, three, four, five, six. Or Ultra, Ultra, wait, Rare, Ultra, Ultra Secret, Super, Super. Okay. Spiral Dragon, Synchron, Bunch of Dino Wrestlers, Doom Eagle, Nahada, Draping, Justica, Last Relay, Rexel, Cataclysm, Run, Gorgon, Empress of the Evil Eye. And I just stack those up. Fall Water, Sea Dragon, Unchained Soul of Disaster, Another Abramax, Infinite Track, Smasher, and nope. Gesmek Yada. Flaming Vanguard. Okay, last pack for the 2010. Okay. Three, four, five, six. Okay, so we have the rare ultra ultra secret. Super super. Okay. No mark up asbestos, burning shell, cannon cord, descendants. I keep looking at the starlight, more slag, glimmer, crusadia, ashuna, recurrent, produ production. Okay, here we go, guys. Wave. Nightmare Incarnation Italy. Trencher. Oh, I just thought it was a trap. Thunder. Oh no, that maybe that's been turned. It's a spell. World Legacy Guard Dragon. Well, okay. I mean, technically. Um, Kaiju. Abramax is a generic. So, I mean, we may actually think about throwing him in as a boss monster. That isn't a bad thing. I'll definitely look through these and figure out what all, but I think Abramax is definitely a throw-in. But hey, we got Savage. So next up, guys, Circuit Break. It's kind of weird to say we don't want high rarity stuff. We want to see supers. But the biggest thing we want to see out of this thing is, is okay, are they going to be face down? They are not. Okay. Hold on. I, I have to do it like this. So we need two more. As I just knocked over another one. Almost revealed what it was. So we need two more sphere mode. So lockout gardener. Ring Dragon of Roth Sphere Mode. There is one of them. So that's two cards added. One extra monster. Let's see if we can't just continue to add more cards. Okay. Miss Starball, Dragon, Mind Die. X Crawler, Crawler Link. Personal Spoofing, Dragons, Concrete, Rebirth Link. So the super is like three cards in. Is that it? Hold on, hold on, hold on. I, I had to double check, so hold on. So it was like three and then super rare and then regular rare. Neary, Synapsis, Ravnir. No, there it is. There's the rare. Destrudo, Mecha Phantom Beast, Rattan, Charger, Stop. Okay, so this was completely off, but we got a Marionetter and we got a Destrudo. That's pretty cool. I mean, we're looking for supers though. Oh God, one card is like all the way at the top of the pack. Stop. What the hell? That's weird. I don't even know. So it was three? Was it four? And then rare. I don't know. Dummy, Fox, Compiler, Dark Angel, Beacon, Medic, Receptor, Generator, and Maftis Executor. Not a. Hmm. Keep knocking stuff over. Not what we want to see. Well, we just need one more sphere mode. I am going to open all these circuit break because we are still looking for the super. So there's no reason not to because no matter what, unless this one box has raw mode. I mean, I technically might as well open all of them. It's not like any other series currently will use them or in future series. Okay, that is, again, it has to be pack side up. So... What's really weird is we have been two for two. Can we be three for three on sphere mode? We have poor armor and sphere mode. Sorry, that needs to go there. We actually have gotten all three sphere mode at a three consecutive circuit break. Can I just continue to see sphere mode? That is fantastic, maybe. All right, so it's one, two, three, super and then the regular rare i think 
Restart, Ranbro, my Starboy. Nope. Does that mean that if it gets booted up by one, that it's a a, 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 a non-super? Dendrite, Spy, Empress. Nope, it's Silk. What am I doing? Okay, we're just... We're, okay, hold on. I need to... Because it worked for that one pack, and now it's not working. Are these packs just kind of random? Is there not a set formula? Dummy. Accumulator, Spine, Clash... Okay, so it's four. Naptis, Security Block, Ling Ling, Soldier Dragon, Capacitator, Stalker. You know, yeah, at least we got a, a Destrudo. Seeing Ulta, Ulta Guy stuff is cool, man. Yeah, I, 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 I do feel like I should give Ulta Guys another shot. Okay, so hold on. So four, Super, and then the regular rare. Headbat, Bamboo Sword, Spy, nope. Vendrinuts, Screw Me, Stitches, Concurry Factor, Ling Ling, and... Hello, hello. Um, okay. So, no matter what, w seeing other... How do I say this? Seeing other promos will be great for the... Uh, for the collector's journey. But, seeing more sphere modes is great because... Oh, this one has damage on the back. I hope that's not a sphere mode. Rokar Karna, and it is another sphere mode. Um, throw that there because we don't need more than one, but that is an extra sphere mode. Um, that's pretty cool. So we're four for four on sphere mode. Uh, okay, so four to the back. Wait, hold on. And then rare super. Spy, Charger, Factor, Beaver, Espaniri, Restart, Trap Globe. Amano Vado, Metaphys Daedalus. That pack felt really weird to try to move around, honestly. So, four. I don't know anymore. Dummy, Side of Starling, Headbat, Pet Liger, Charger, Factor, right, Passcode, and another Silk. I don't know. This pack, the, the cards feel really... Oh god, how do I say? The other ones, other two felt fine. This one feels really... Oh, how do I say this? Gummy? Like, I don't know. They don't feel, like, very easy to grab. It's fine, mine eye, clash. Nope, broken line. Stargis, Dendret, Ling Ling, Beast Raten, and Metaverse. Okay, we have one special edition left. Will we get a fifth overall sphere mode gotten one from our first thing is is sphere mode supposed to be hard to get in this or is it supposed to be that easy because i don't know if i should go five for five on sphere mode it feels like it should be a little hard in that jesus christ this one feels like it was like the fort knox of fucking um and this isn't a set formula because we've seen that lockout gardener with sphere mode, but we also saw the trap. So here we go. Lockout Gardener and a, a fifth sphere mode. I, I just want to be honest. Five out of five on all Circuit Break Special Editions. We got five sphere mode. All right, next pack. Let's just, oh boy. See, this one feels, oh no, this one feels kind of gummy too. Like sticky. Pet Liger, Crosser. Scrib draw. Oh, that's a secret. Action, Angel, Konkari, Empress, Vengeance, Reunion. I'm just going to go through no pack trick because screw this this series. I much prefer a set pack. Headbat, Beaver, Bestinary, Restart, The Quiet Life. Personal Smooth Wing, Spy, Empress, and Axon. Our last pack. We want to see an Exceed Monster. Okay. Dummy, Maculator Spine, I, uh, Black Cat, Backup Squad, Dragon Receptor, Pit Stop. I don't know if I should complain that we got three Ultras and a Secret out of four Special Editions, but, like, I don't know, man. I mean, we got the playset of Sphere Mode. 
I don't think I can. I don't think I have any right to complain about going 5 for 5 on sphere modes out of the uh, special editions. But we did not see what we were hoping to see there with the sleepy taper or in the lost art, the drunk taper. Okay, guys. Pretty much. Can we see Garuda to trade? Or, oh, the Deco Talker. I will have to pull that out of its thing eventually. And three packs. If we can just get beyond the pendulum, that'd be great. Uh, if we can get Dark, Dark Charm of Gloomy and Ultra, that'd be great. But time to find out. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, I believe. Receptor, Reversion, Zombies, Dispelling, Shell, Alternative, Tornado Trends, Stovey Torby, Version, Blisp, probably another card that deserved to get a higher rarity, Gorgonda, Penny. Okay, so Gabrine, they're on stand up. Chinook the Snow Blast, Chagonic Pendulum, Magic Rebo, and Arion the Labyrinth Servant. Okay. So that Ultra and Secret slots are what really matters. We're looking for Link Link. Like the links are the only thing, not to be confused with Ling Ling, uh, only things we care about on Link Monsters. Swordmaster setup, Doom Broker, Archfiend, Iron Digger, Archfiend, Exclusion, Rover, Rose Diamond, Ku Clock, Radiation, Bonded, Branded Lost, Soul Scissors, Salamander Catalyzer, Odd Eyes Pendulum Graph, Psychic and Punisher, and Faithful Venture. Thankfully, we have one more tin left after this. I mean, no matter what, we cannot complain. We got a Starlight. Steny, Straddle, Parents, Medium, Ayun, MK11, Fireburst, Rose, Resurrection, Horse, Slash, Leisure. Okay. Nightmare of the Dark Bonded. Morphtron Conversion. Zonda the Dusk. Stealth Dragon. Hugin. Therion King, Regulus. Last tin, guys. Can I see another Sidra? Maybe. Or, I don't know. The uh, Dark Magician would be bad. Armor Master wouldn't be bad. Because I like Armor Master. I was a Black Queen player. And it's Utopia. Okay. Well, technically, I just hit the mic. I'm so sorry, guys. I was trying to move the tin as fast as I could. Utopia is technically usable, sad enough. <laughs> Do we sell him in? Probably not, but you know, he is an option. It's six. Barrage, Setup, Returnia, MK11, Overroot, Sky Ninja, Discharge, Wally, Blisp, Brute, Arms Light, Clear New World, They're on Duke Yule, Ancient Destruction Venus, Runic Clashing. Oh, oh, I just dropped a card. Clyde O'Hart and Tamias the United Dragon. I am just cards are slipping everywhere at this point. I need to stop. I need to calm myself. These are the last two packs of an entire case. And are we not going to see either of the cards we need for either sealed only? I hope we do. Firestarter, Trinsar, Rideable Dragon, Leonidas, Balone, Concon, Rallo, Wallow, Founder of the Drudge Dragons, Exclusion, Cross, DD Griffin, Labyrinth, Senatus, Branded Beast, Sales Ban, Samson, Samara, Sorrow Cat, Dictator D, Runic Tip, and Rexteria. Oh, Rexterm. I said Rexteria. Last pack of an entire case, guys. Will there be something in here, or is this whole case bad? Listen in, Decline, Zombies, Appearance, Reversion, Mr. Girl, Seamare, Exrosion, Hidden City, Resurrection, Secret Arts, Ripmaster, Dogmatic Abre, Camellia, Dragonic Pentagram, Geek Boy, Last Card, Spiro Neos, and Blazing Cartesia. A whole case of tins, and we didn't see a single Beyond the Pendulum, Guru Rings of Resident Life, or Dark the Dark Trauma. But... We pulled a Starlight Boil Load Savage Dragon. I can't complain about that. And a Ring Dragon Raw Sphere Mode. I, I I just can't complain. I pulled my first fucking Starlight, guys. I'm super excited. The deck is going to change a bit. Uh, I'm going to look at the cards I pulled, see if any of them are currently useful for the deck. Guys, 
our deck looks strong. Triple Abyss Act Curtain Razor, Triple Chronograph, Double Double Iris, Triple Harmonizing, the Run Fenrir, which we had more, Triple Oak Dragon, one Perform Power Celestial, Triple Skoko Bat, Triple Purple Poison, the One Time Gaze, the One White Wing, Triple Wisdom Eye, the Called By, Dimensional Fissure, the Triple Duelist Alliance, Double Pen Call, the One Star Pendulum Graph, Triple Evenly Matched, Triple Macrocosmos, Time Pendulum Graph, the side deck looks competent. Triple DD Crow, Triple Ring Dragon or Sphere Mode, Triple Cosmic Cyclone, the One Harpies, Triple D Barrier, One Imperm and One Judgment. Honestly, if I walked up to a tournament with this side deck, the One Imperm and the One Judgment's a little weird, but you would look at that and think, okay, it's a side deck. Like, it actually looks like a side deck, which is something we haven't had. Although, I, a part of me does want to take out the Cosmos and the dimen uh, Dimensional Fissure. To put in another Fenrir and I don't know, maybe I throw the Imperm? Get, I don't know, I don't know, because I'd have to take out six cards, triple Fissure, triple Macros, throw in two Fenrir. I like having the 42 card deck, but if I replaced, you know, we'll think about that in a minute. Our extra deck is looking spectacular. Baron de Flora, Borlo, Savage, Nissa Promise, by the way, Starlight Borlode Savage, uh, Ignition Promise, Boss and Draco Slayer, the Side Frame Lord Omega, Bistrella, Zeus, Time Star, Tornado Dragon, Moving to the Lynx, Artemis, Lioned, Light Charm Illustrious, we really want her brother, well, I don't know if that's actually brother in war, but, you know, Dark the Dark Charmer Gloomy, the only male Charmer in the groups. Although, I do love, like, Lina. I like her outfit. That's the thing I like most, is it's like, it's the perfect blend of Charmer, but still looking like, you know, you're a strong warrior. Like, some of the Charmer's outfits are kind of eh. The one IP Masquerina, which we pulled another one today. That's insane. The Nightmare Phoenix, the Selene Queen of Master Magi uh, Magicians. I keep wanting to say Magistus, and I don't know why. Every time I say see Selene Queen of Master Magicians, I think I've wanted to say Queen of Master Magistus, and I don't know why. Maybe she just looks like a Magistus card to me, even though I think she's in Dimian, right? Yeah. Uh, Black House Soldier, Soldier Chaos, and of course, we pulled two of him, but he's so strong as a boss deck monster, like extra deck monster to go, Long Soldier Chaos, Baron de Fleur, Borlo Savage Zeus, Mech Knight Crusadia Abramax. Um, I was thinking at one point about pulling uh, Dark Fluid, I think he was. Oh no, what was the one? The one that allows you to get negate tokens on him based on what the links or stuff point to him or whatever. I was thinking about him, but then I was like, I don't, I don't know. The deck... Um, putting him in, seems like we'd have to work to get him into motion, while our extra deck is kind of pretty settled and balanced until we get the final build going. But, let's actually look at what we are missing. Because, Triple D Shifter, Two Dimensional Fissure, I think Shifter is just such a powerful card you'd run him anyways. Uh, Triple Nibiru, the Baguska, the Super Rare Dodged Us, the Access Code, the Beyond the Pendulum, the Appaloosa, and the Dark Dark Trauma Gloomy. Um, honestly, Dark, he has dodged us in the tins. Beyond the Pendulum, she has dodged us in the tins. Appaloosa's dodged us in the 2020 tins. Access Code dodged us a number of times looking for him. But Guska has done a fantastic do job, seeing we've actually opened a set with him as a gold rare, and he never showed up either. Nib, I don't think we've any opened anything with Dimensional Shift or Nib in it, so... I mean, they're both in the 2022 tins, but yeah... I, I don't want to say too much about them dodging us because I really have done too much. And then we opened a couple packs, I think a maybe a box, to try to see if we couldn't see a fish or something. No, it was a couple packs left after another opening. Um, but yeah, honestly, guys, I want to talk about something and I want your comments on this. So I've been thinking, this is our final build, right? Now, what if I like the extra deck? The evenly matched are not main deck cards. They go on the side, but they are powerful. I'm thinking, what if we change things up a little bit? And I would obviously want your opinion on there. If we grab like Kashtira Fenrir and throw him in here, I'm not going to save any of this junk, but let's say we take out the Fissures, the Cosmos. The three Fenrir brings it to 39. What if we bring up the evenly matched like we have in the deck currently? That's 42, and in the side deck, we can put in something else, like Imperm, you know? Like, you know, triple Imperm. What do you guys think something like this? Because I don't know, I feel like Macrocosmos 
and um, you know, dimension. I'm about to say dimensional shifter, dimensional barrier. I don't think are that powerful. Shifter is powerful. Um, but we also have a lot of cards, especially with the exceeds that can put cards in the graveyard, making that useless too. I don't know, guys. I, I am going to be thinking about stuff, but with our needs down to five in, like, literally the main, three in the side, five in the extra, we're under, t like, ten for the, like, main deck cards, like, main side. And the extra deck's down to five. That's insane, because a little while ago, all of these things were so full. I think our new, uh, our new format is definitely working, guys. But yeah, let me know if you think this should stay the final build or if I should try to tweak it around to get the Fenrir's in there because Fenrir is a powerful card, guys, and I don't think he should be underestimated why we have access to him. But guys, let's get to the matches. All right, guys, time for our very first match. And you know what we're aiming for. We have a challenge to win two matches. Now, we've already accomplished the other two challenges by pulling an extra deck card which happens to be a starlight i still can't get over that it blows my mind but also we also added three cards to the deck we only need to add two added to sphere mode and we added that starlight boral oh god borlode savage dragon just getting my first starlight on video was I, I like froze I didn't know what to say I didn't know what to think it was I freaked out immediately afterwards because like I feel like I have to keep composure on camera and I don't and I don't let my emotions show and I probably should but yeah no honestly guys it was something I totally freaked out about and I couldn't actually believe myself that it actually happened now I do have to know that Winning two matches is key, not only for the episode challenges, but we haven't won more than one episode for like three episodes now. And that is really difficult, especially when the virtual challenges, which has added a lot of cards, hangs in the balance. And with it hanging in the balance, like, yeah, we need to win these matches. It's important. Now, nice thing is, though, we're one up in this match. So we just have to play smart and see if we can't just pick it up and dominate. I do feel bad for Friendly Duelist. Um, they've had a couple of times where we were recording, right? And the tough thing is, is that Duelist Nexus is been recently sometimes really weird like it doesn't always connect and stuff and you know it can be tough like that but yeah it's really tough like to see him brick after we had so many connection issues when we were trying to record this episode we'd get past game one and game two we'd always crash and so if we finally get into game two and it's working and we're like yes that's awesome and the worst thing was we get to this match and he bricked. Like, I can't remember what he has in his hands. But, like, I guess the cards were not usable. Like, he bricked so bad. Um, oh, I can't remember what they were. Droll and Lockbird, maybe? I can't remember. But, yeah, Friendly Duelist bricked so bad. But, you know, what more, what more could we do at this point? Like, there really wasn't. I misplayed horribly. Curtain Razor was a once per duel summoning it from the um, Spell Trap Zone. I uh, From Pendulum Zone. I should have just normal summoned it. It would have been a 22 and I probably would have had the advantage and probably could have taken that. Instead, it's 1-1 one, one, and now I'm ruining my chances thinking we could have easily stayed more competitive in the second match. I miss playing. I have to be smarter. And so at this point, I'm thinking, okay... We're going to really sit here and try to make sure we have a link in the grave for that boar load. And fish is doing fish stuff. So we're just trying to prevent him from getting another fish card. And guess what? It works. So at this point, thinking he doesn't have two four scales. That's two fours to scale. That's, an, I mean, scale to uh, exceed. And I'm like, oh, because he got his one three star. Well, unfortunately, there's nothing stopping this. 
and he has to go for popping it, but that doesn't mean he has enough power to knock out my 2100 attack point monster. And so he does pop one, I destroy it, summons the spawn, cool. At this point, I have to say, I'm pretty confident. And then he swings for the fences where we make sure we have purple poison to come and clutch. At this point, I'm thinking, okay, we have this in the bag. We've got the first match. Unless that face down is something big, it isn't. Boom, we bring out Borload. Oh, okay, call by whatever. We can still get the two instead of the three. And guess what? Our Borload Savage is massive, 39.25. Swing in. We get it. We're one up on matches, guys. That is big. That is one match one. We need to win a second match. So, at this point, I'm feeling confident. And why wouldn't I be? You know, our deck is looking stronger and stronger. Yeah, we're missing key pieces still. I'm not going to lie. I am debating about changing the final deck list. But against Virtual World, a deck that never bricks... Oh, wait. It did. I felt so bad. Honestly, they bricked so hard, and we pick up an easy 1-0 in this match. And I'm thinking, oh, can we win this 2-0 and just secure it nice and simple? Not go 1-1 like we did last time because of a stupid mistake. Looking at the hand, the hand isn't bad. The biggest issue is making sure that we don't get completely screwed by <clears throat> Chuche, by, you know, the effects to bounce. And it's like, okay, bounced it, okay. Can't search, that's fine. I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to have to just use the other to pen. Go in, you know, pop. Go in, Tornado Dragon, pop. Swing in, damage. Can't kill it by battle, though, which is a tough one. Um, ghost activate effect, that's fine. You know. We race the negate here just to make sure we can stop it from continuing on. Unfortunately, he does have some sort of extension here. Goes to bounce or pop technically, but yeah. I'm sitting here thinking, oh wow, okay, do we have something to go into this? Okay, swing in, hit it, and line at least gets us a body back, which is very key. So, at this point, it looks neck and neck, and I'm thinking, okay... We're losing the advantage ever so slightly, but we're not out of this match at all. So we go in, and he goes, okay, there's the second 2J. He sins, I'm thinking, okay, that's tough, because we're at a big disadvantage here. And our life points are dwindling down, and he is just going all in to try to get this victory. And I'm thinking, okay, there's not much I can do about this. You know, he's, he's got it. You know, there's not much I can do to really counter this at this point. Think, okay, I take the damage. I'll just show macro just to show. We're 1-1 again. And it's not cleaning up that second match, although that one was a lot different. I didn't misplay so much as it was just we didn't have it. But yeah, Macrocosmos doesn't feel that strong. d doesn't feel that strong. Uh, we don't have Shifter. And I don't know if I want to keep him or take him out yet. And that's a tough thing is I'm debating in my head constantly. We're so close to completing this deck. 13 cards left. But do we just take that fact we are close to completing it and run with it? Or do we try to make the best deck possible? I have other series ready to be lined up to come out that I'm super excited for, that I'm thinking about 24-7. And what do I do about it? You know? And it's it's a real it's a real thinker, it's a real conundrum. But yeah, at this point he goes in, takes out Bon, and just like, oh okay, there's Zeus, Zeus blows up everything. Fantastic. I don't play anything just out of fear of what I may have, and I'm like, okay. Scale, scale, bring in set. He's gonna have to destroy purple poison. No, he kaijus, and I'm just thinking, does he have the answer to everything? Thinking, okay, I can at least bring back Purple Poison. Purple Poison will allow me to destroy Zeus. I'll get another Skulker Bat. Okay, brings in attacks. I can take care of Zeus. Here we go. Add Pendulum. We've got this. We've got this sealed in the bag as long as we aren't dumb. 
and we're not. So now we have our two match wins. That is important because not only does it take it to five for the virtual challenges, but it gives us all three episode challenges. So I'm in control of the budget, which means I can get the next episode out quicker, except for the Patreon packs. But, 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 can I win all three? That'd be a momentous shift. And at this point, I'm thinking, okay, um, by the way, friendly duelists, you don't see it. I was talking to him and he messaged me and he said, Book of Moon is like MST, it negates, right? And I just, I was just like, hmm. But yeah, he does everything right to kind of clear my board in essence. You know, negating effects, making sure I don't have my scales. You know, right here, he plays this so well to have follow up to pop. And I'm just thinking, okay, well, what can I do here? I can scale. You know, I don't have a link yet, so Warload isn't a total answer. So I'm like, I'll pop the back row. Okay, it's another Book of Moon. Selene, great. You know, make sure I have a link in the board. Swing in, deal some damage. Okay, we know he has the follow-up. And so we pop that. We go search. We're good. Okay, special summon. That's fine. Okay, he has, he's making 10 -y plays. Yes, yeah, Shaman. Okay. We're fine at this point, though. I don't feel rushed. I don't feel pressured. I feel like we are able to get plays off. And Borload is a really clutch card. And it's coming super handy. We swing in. We have the advantage. Obviously, we're going to negate. He's left wide open. My turn. Swing in. We are up 1-0. Can we win this? Can we go and just win all three matches and seal this 2 out. Well, Sword Soul does Sword Soul things, guys. You know, I know what he has back there and I'm just gonna make sure Blackout gets gone because he was gonna get rid of Blackout always. I don't think I would keep Chi Shao with Blackout, especially seeing I'm a pen deck and who knows how quickly I can um, pop. So yeah, I'm like, okay, I can attack. I just tried to pop to get rid of it. I was like, that's fine, we'll macro. This will at least somewhat mess with Sword Soul a little bit, but not really. Um, yeah, it, this was, this was, there was tough because he got everything he needed to just take it out. It's 1-1. One, one. Now, all these matches, we go 1-1 one and one, and then win the third one. And so I'm like thinking, okay, let's be smart. Let's make the right plays. You know, at this point, I'm thinking maybe IP. And this is where I make a massive mistake because I go, okay, I negate, perfect. Okay, that's fine. I'm gonna IP into something even better. And I'm like, no, not yet. I'm gonna wait until he's ready to do stuff, you know? And I'm like, okay, that's fine. Yeah, you bring out. And I like, wait a minute, why couldn't I go into, BLS needs three monsters. I keep for some reason thinking he's a two plus link three. And so at this point, I'm just like, this is horrible. You know, I have completely made mistakes. I have messed up so severely. And right now, all I'm thinking about is how I can turn it around. So he imperms to take less damage. And I'm thinking, okay, 10 stuff, okay. Bounces, okay, he has Monk. Does he have anything? More Tennies, Shaman's out there. Okay, brings back and I'm dead. All right, guys, what more can I say about this episode? It was everything I dreamed for and more. This is definitely my favorite episode of this series. Probably one of the best episodes I've ever had on the channel. And um, I, oh God, pulling my first Starlight on camera my first Starlight ever, to be honest, but the, having it be on camera, having it be an actual useful card like Bull Load Savage is insane. And uh, I just can't believe it. The deck we ran today looks better and better. And when we look at what we need left, five cards, three in the side, five in the main. I mean, I said five cards. I meant five in the extra. It's... You know, down to 13, that's it. And I do have a spoiler. So if you don't want spoiler, a quick spoiler for the Yu-Gi-Oh! Sealed Only DBC Season 2 Episode 17, which is dropping the day after this one, 
that episode that is going to be released, I think, tomorrow at the time of this going up, they pulled Beyond the Pendulum, or I pulled Beyond the Pendulum in that series. So that series has it, but there is a trade offer. And really quickly, I want to talk about that trade offer. Because if that series already has Beyond the Pendulum, right? The Yu-Gi-Oh! Sealed only DBC Season 2. And they already have Beyond the Pendulum. If we in this series, the Yu-Gi-Oh! Sealed only Challenge Edition, can get Garuda Rings Rise and Life, we can trade. Which means we could get Beyond the Pendulum if we pull Garuda out of the tins. That is massive. I've also personally decided that Episode 18 of DBC uh, Season 2 will not be filmed right away. I want to get Episode 24 filmed and out so they have one shot ahead of that before going back to filming both at nearly the same time to get Garuda. So next episode... Probably want to open a couple tins because if we either pull Beyond the Pendulum, great, cool. Or we pull Garua, we get Beyond the Pendulum. Either way, it's a win-win, right guys? So, I do want to end this conversation with two things. Of course, we can go to challenges, but first, the final deck list. I've been debating about taking out D-Fizz and Macro. I still think D-Shifter is a powerful card, but there's a problem. If we take out D-Fizz and Macro and slap in six new cards... I bet three will be Fenrir, okay? Let's be honest. But that would give two here. But those three other cards, unless it's three cards we already have, the closest we are to ending the series, which is right now, if I change the gold deck list, this 13 cards left thing could easily become 15. And I don't know if it's worth it for having a deck that is slightly stronger. Um, I'm not 100% sure. I am really realizing that it was just nostalgia train for D Fizz and Macro that made me put it in this deck, and it's not as useful. Um, yeah. So, guys, now let's actually talk about challenges. So, virtual challenge number three. We made an impact, guys. Open 25 packs, we've done that. Add eight cards from the final build, we've done that. Win 10 matches, we won two today, bringing us to five out of 10. We're halfway done. And I'm glad we have broken the one match per episode. If we can win two or three matches in the next episode or two, we could be done with this and get virtual packs, which will be massive because those have helped us all the way, except the last time we opened virtual packs where instead of seeing a single dimensional fissure, we saw five macrocosmos. I don't, don't know how. But episode challenge for episode 23 Episode 22, we completed all the challenges because we did gain one sub after 70, uh, before 72 hours. But this time, we've completed all three again. This is back-to-back -back episode challenges being fully completed. Win two matches, did it. Add two cards from the final build, we added three. Two sphere mode, one starlight boar load savage. I mean, I can't get over saying it. Add one extra deck monster. Oh yeah, the starlight boar load savage. Man. That's just amazing. But yeah, guys, let me know what you think about changing the final deck list. If you think that power boost from taking out Fissure and Cosmos would be worth it. Or do we just grind through to get this series done to get my next series I have planned into rotation? Let me know down in the comments below. And guys, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Check out Patreon. And until next time, well, tag out. A special thank you to all my Patreon supporters, Urza. And if you're interested in supporting the channel, wanting to see content early, or just to make me re-record this because I'd have to add another name to the list, check out Patreon in the link description below.